Elijah, hello. Hey, Boris. Hey, guys. I'm Boris. I'm a physician assistant. This is... I'm Elijah. I'm a PAS1 student. I just got done with my first semester of PA school. Um, I was categorized as like a low GPA applicant, and I think Boris was too. Very low GPA applicant. So Who, my, who's uh, is lower? Who's is lower? I think. Well, I don't know. That's kind of hard to decide because, like, initially my college GPA was two point oh. nine, two point nine eight, uh, and then after post back, it obviously went way up. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, college GPA was two point nine eight. What was yours? I think uh, right out of UCLA, it was a two point one, and Ooh. then after my after my post back or my master's, it was like a two point three sGPA. So I barely moved. <laughs> Yeah, dude. So 2.1. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 2.3 science. Science. 2.3 science, maybe like a 2.5 overall. Okay. Oh, so that's after you did some work. Yeah, that's like after a couple of, I think, 60 to 80 units of my master's. Oh, okay. I mean, that. so master's and uh, bachelor's don't get combined in CASPA. Mm -hmm. So straight up, just undergrad, 2.1 QM, 2.3 science. 2.3 science, 2.5 QM. Oh, 2.5 QM. Okay. Yeah, it probably went up after the master's, yeah. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, so 2.5 QM, 2.3 science, and then mm -hmm. 2.98 QM. I don't know what my science was. Can't be much higher. Two <laughs> now, what is your GPA in PA school? Um, Well, I I got straight A's, A minuses. Woo! Let's go, I know. Let's Woo! go! PAS 1.5, 4.0 GPA, right? Yeah, uh, yep, yep. I mean, a couple A minuses here and there, but in my heart, I missed it by like one percent. So <laughs> I, I'm counting it. It was literally less than one percent. I and I was so close to like the grade being rounded up, but it, it's okay. <laughs> oh, not not 4.0. What is it like a 3.9 or something or 3.8? I get 3.3.8, .3 something like that. Okay, that's about yeah. what I ended up. Uh, because you don't really get graded second year, so it's all your first year that gets you your GPA in mm -hmm. PA school. And what I was, I was going to try to share my screen because I actually pulled up my transcript. Just so people know we're not lying about this stuff. We're legit. All right? Nobody's lying here. There I am. Oh, was, I like flat A's. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you actually did way better than I did. Or maybe not way better because I didn't really get any minuses. I'm not even sure if, uh, if we had pluses and minuses because I had, like, if it's an A, it's an A. If it's a B, it's a B. So that's me. That's my name. We're legit. We're not lying to you guys. There's my uh, fall semester. Solid. What is? What was this? 3.8. Then second semester, a couple of Bs in there, 3.5, which made me cry. And then straight A's <laughs> semester, 4.0. So that ended up being like, uh, what is it? 3.77, you know, close to 3.8 total. Awarded Master of Science. August 2021. Okay, so we're not lying to you guys. We actually did go through this stuff. Um, I would show mine, but I think my um, my school's still processing my transcript. Yeah, yours is still fresh, not mm -hmm. off the press. Um, <laughs> so anyway, from a 2.9 college GPA to a 3.8 PA school GPA right over here, from a 2.5 college GPA to a little bit higher than that in PA school, I think it's like 3.8. Um, I, I, I'm around the 3.8, I think. 3.8, a little bit yeah. higher than mine, you know, 3.9, whatever. And you're going to pull it up because you're going to get straight A's next semester. Oh, I don't know how sustainable that is, but yes, it is. I'll try. <laughs> I mean, you understand the grind now. At this point, yeah. it's just like you're just swimming in it now. You understand what you're doing. And it's awesome because next semester are more like, med like medically and clinically relevant uh, classes, which I think I'll be more interested in than like biochem. <laughs> That's true, too. That's true, too. You're not doing the foundations anymore. It's like actually what you're going to be doing in real life. Yep. I'm excited for it. I've been looking forward to next semester. I, I'm i going to be honest. I did, not, I did not look at the school's curriculum prior to starting school. So I didn't even realize I had to retake anatomy and micro again. It was crazy. <laughs> it's weird that you guys do that. I've noticed some schools go back to basics and they do like... Mm -hmm biochem and micro and stuff again my program didn't my my program i think is shorter than yours yeah and it just went straight to clinical medicine i think most schools are like your program where they they skip the prereqs right because you've already done them but i don't know my school like 
really like has a strong emphasis on the foundations and I guess they wanted to teach us on the graduate level learning. So I was okay with it, but I was kind of like thrown off by it, like kind of surprised because I expected that I wouldn't need biochem anymore. And I just took that right before starting. So I was like, what am I doing here? I don't know. I, like on one hand, I'm a little jealous of that because that's more of like what med school does. Uh huh. Kind of do the basics and like they teach the basics their way and then they apply that into medicine. Mm -hmm. Whereas for us, like everyone learned the basics in their own little way. And then we were just thrown into the chaos of learning medicine and applying it. Um, so like we got done quicker, 24 months versus what are you guys like 28 months? Oh, a little bit longer than that. Like 33, I think. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Like, so half years, like six months less. Or what, wait, no, what is that? Eight months less school. Um, but yeah. at the same time, I'm kind of jealous. You guys probably have a more well-rounded education. But I definitely feel, I, I love my program and I love the foundations that we've established, but I see like my other friends that have gotten in this year as well. And they're already into the like medical modules, learning the medicine. And I'm over here like, oh, brachial plexus <laughs> and all that. <laughs> you get the brachial plexus too. That was in, uh, that was just in anatomy and physiology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I just finished that final uh, this past semester. It was tough this semester. It was super tough. Yeah, which leads us into our main topic of the day. Uh, so this was, I don't know, the the low GPA, 2PA school portion, which is kind of what our channel focuses on. Um, but now it's going to be our, me and Elijah's very, very different philosophy for studying. Mm -hmm. And so this kind of came about, um, this one girl's mom, actually, of all people, found me on Instagram. No, she found me on YouTube. And she's like, wow, this guy knows what he's talking about. So she messaged me on Instagram saying, my daughter just uh, took a leave of absence from PA school because, you know, she had very poor grades and was basically about to flunk out. And she's like, can you help her? And I was like, yeah, I could help her. And so I actually asked Elijah, like, so what is your study method? How could she have done better? And then he like sent me this long ass text about how he studied. And I was like, wow, that's totally not at all what I was going to tell her. Like I had totally different advice. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of like, you know, told her both, whatever works for her. Uh, but Elijah's, the way Elijah studies is so different from what I found to work for me. And, you know, here we are both, you know, success stories. So just very quickly, I wanted Elijah to kind of give you an overview of how he studied the semester and how he found success. Yeah. So, um, first couple of weeks we were thrown right into it. I had a medical terminology exam the first day, I believe I did really well in that, but it's nothing like, like the actual like exams, like that was kind of like a warm up uh, exam. Um, so I would do uh, what any other student would do, go to class, you know, take notes. Uh, initially, I would like write out all the notes. I would literally rewrite the whole lecture, which I now that I look back on it was pretty redundant. Um, it's like word for word I, or did you word, write word for word? You literally just transcribed everything word for word, not even condensing. Yeah, yeah like I. Um, like, cause I used to be a scribe, so I type really fast. So I was able to like, um, I felt like I was able to retain it and type it at the same time. But in reality, uh, with how fast everything came, that wasn't sustainable for more than let's say two weeks. So I was already like panicking. Cause I was like, Oh God, I, like, I'm behind lectures already. I have to study for this exam. And, but they're still throwing us so much information from these uh, classes. And I was like, I was really in the thick of it. And then once we had our first couple exams i didn't do horrible but the amount of studying i was doing i put everything on the back burner my wife literally handled everything at home so i could live, like study like eight hours plus a day i think in the beginning because i i told myself i was going to overload in the beginning uh and then dial it back but i ended up getting like mid b's low b's on my first couple tests which what was the minimum to pass i think the minimum to pass is the b right oh you guys are allowed to c's yeah, and our program is... Oh, we weren't allowed anything lower than an 80. Oh, wow. Yeah, That's 79 is failing. 79 <laughs> at LeMoyne is failing. You know, so if you get below a mm -hmm. 70, below an 80, you have to make it up with some sort of a remediation thing. So you guys were allowed Cs. Yeah. Okay, that, that takes a lot of pressure off. But I don't think anyone actually got a C. No, they did it. Yeah, because I saw the class average and the low and highs, and... No one got below a C on any of the classes. Or, I'm sorry, below a B, below a B. So I think the lowest was like an 84, one of our harder classes. 
Yeah. Wait, could we explore that real quick? So yeah. uh, I, I think like college might do that undergrad. Uh, but like, I only remember this from PA school because like when you get your grades, they like populate online and like Blackboard or whatever your school uses. And uh -huh. like, everybody is freaking out, refreshing, 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 refreshing until they pop, like until they like uh, come out. And you always look at the high grade, the average and like the low. And well, first off, you want to see if you pass what you got. And then like mm -hmm. once you passed or even if you didn't, you want to know, okay, where am I? Like if you didn't do well, you're like, did someone get worse than me? Yes, yes, I'm not the worst. Or <laughs> like, man, how, how good did the high do? Okay, I'm only like a couple percent away from the high. That's sweet. Or mm -hmm. am I average? Am I below average, above average? Okay, I'm like above average even by like 0.1%. Okay, I feel good. So you're like constantly, constantly comparing yourself, which is so toxic, but it's also like what these – a plus players that are in these grad schools are always like, mm -hmm. and if you're not like that, you're going to fail because like, it, that's what motivates you. Yeah. And just to like tie that back into like my study habits. I am um, one of my closest friends that I've developed a really close friendship with now. His name is Patrick. Uh, he, Patrick. Shout Patrick, out to Patrick. Woo! Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Not non-traditional. He uh, also had a low GPA. Uh, we oh. kind of just stuck together. Um, nice. He was getting A's like right off the bat. And oh, shit. And I was like talking to him. I was like, hey, man, like I'm doing all the studying. I'm rewriting all the notes. Like I got a B. It's not what I wanted. I want A's because I know like the amount of time I put in, like that's what I feel like I deserve. But I then he told me that uh, he kind of told me like switch it up a little bit because the way he did it was to re he rereads everything as much as he can. So he'll go through like, let's say like there's four lectures for the next exam. He would read through it, through it all um, like pretty like intently like with the uh with intent to learn um then you just read has, straight, not copying not taking notes no. just straight up reading yeah i think what he tries to do and is what uh and what i tried to do following his method was basically try to get like a photographic memory of what was on the slide and then it, the more times you go over it like we would go over lectures like twice or three times around um or I would have my lecture notes here and then someone's Quizlet on the side. So I'm like kind of looking at it in two different aspects. Mm -hmm. So I feel like the more I look at things, the better ingrained it gets into my memory because I'll also like, let's say I'm looking at like the brachial plexus, right? Like here's a slide in front of me. Um, I'll probably uh, try to condense it into like something like in a way I'll understand it. Like I'll draw it in a way, like I'll understand it. Our professor like provided a lot of good diagrams. And then I would just like close my eyes and then try to like, okay, this is where my skill and continuous was on that diagram. This is where this, this, and this, this were. So that at least on the exam, I can draw it out. Um, so that's just one example. But the biggest takeaway that I took from Patrick was that the more you go over material, the more it's going to get ingrained into your memory. And it started working for me. I was getting, I think, like average, like low A's on all my exams after that. Um oh, wow. There was one exam, I think I only missed like two questions. I got like a 96, 97%. So that was awesome. Wait, so what changed was instead of writing things out and transcribing literally everything, you just mm -hmm. started reading your notes. But like, I, I, yeah, yeah. Not, not just reading. I, I don't want to mislead people. I'm not just reading like going word for word, word for word, word for word. I'm I'm like, what'll whatever will help me ingrain it into memory as I'm reading it. Like I'm actively reading it. I'm thinking, okay, so this is where this is. And on that slide or okay so this is how like this pathway goes here and then this pathway goes there like i really look at each slide intently and try to really understand what's going on so it's not just reading it's really understanding the material and then my second go around like my second go through of these lectures will just be like reinforcing those ideas hmm. i guess it's just hard for me to practically put into words what you're doing so you're not just straight up like reading word for word mindlessly Mm -hmm. You're all like all cylinders firing, all hands on deck, like looking yeah. at every single thing written on the slide and the pictures and like really trying to like incorporate it into your memory. Yeah. Like, reading hard. Like it's hard to put in it's a word. Explain. Yeah. But you're you're not quizzing yourself or, or are you? Are you quizzing yourself while you're reading? Yeah. So um, if it's something especially that I don't understand, I'll be like, OK, I need to know this this like G protein pathway. So I know that it. That once this falls for like, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> then, th then this goes here, and then this goes there. Here, like, I'll, for example, um, I have a cake here, right? Let's say this is a slide. Okay, like, you, see all, you see all the words here, right? 
Uh, I see. Yeah, sweet Sam. Okay. No, kind of blurry. Blurry. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I got it. Okay. So I would look at this enough times where in my mind, when I'm taking the test, I could be like, okay, the answer for this specific question is on the bottom right hand portion of this slide. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So like really intense, like almost like photographic memory at that point as well, like on top of the reinforcing yeah. of ideas. So are you a very visual person? I didn't think so until Patrick told me to try those methods out. Yeah. My, my photo memory was really horrible. Like, Ow. yeah, but then I like, I guess I just trained that part of my brain and that's yeah. what worked for me during exams. Like I would remember things on slides that a lot of my classmates like wouldn't re remember. And I'm just like, oh yeah, that's on uh, this slide on this bottom left-hand portion of that picture. Hmm. Really weird. I, I didn't know I was like that. You like developed a photographic memory. Yes, I definitely did not have that in undergrad. That's not how we studied in undergrad. Yeah, you just uncovered it. It's like talent is not created. It's uncovered. You've already had it. You just weren't forced to use it. Mm -hmm. so, I kind of wonder. So I don't know if that's good advice to the general public. Because like <laughs> not everybody has that gift. I sure as heck don't. Mm -hmm. um, I just have to keep reinforcing drills and like get it into my head in different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, but I wonder if more people have that than they think they do. Because you didn't have it until you realized you did. No, I, I I didn't. Yeah, I I never used anything like that for undergrad or even my masters. Yeah, interesting. I, I just wonder like how that develops. Like I wonder if you're just a very very visual person and you didn't know it, or if it's like survival mode. Your brain is just like evolving to like meet the demands that you're giving it because it's never had them before, and like mm -hmm. it knows it needs this to survive, or otherwise you fail and then you don't make money and then you starve and then you die. So I don't. Exactly. Know. I was, I was so like anxious and nervous and I was like, this isn't sustainable. Like I'm spending so many hours rewriting these notes. I'm just going to try what Patrick told me. And if it works, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it, I don't know, God, it, it worked. I, I told him, I was like, dude, like I studied the way you told me and I, I'm doing it. And then that's what I did like throughout the semester. I just did that. And then I, my photographic memory just got really better. Um, I, found myself studying a lot less like I was I was studying every day yes but I wasn't like typing notes that which takes forever yeah and getting all that carpal tunnel yeah, <laughs> yeah. I remember I kind of had a not the same realization because I'm not nearly as visual as you but a similar realization in post back because like the first probably like few weeks I was trying to just like transcribe like book chapters not word for word but definitely like taking very detailed notes on everything and I would fill up these like thick notebooks and within like weeks, my hand was like excruciatingly painful and I couldn't even write anymore. And so like, it was the best thing to do. It was like that, like mind muscle connection where you're like looking and you're writing and like, you're just all hands on deck, like mm -hmm. in your brain, like actively learning it. But that just physically wasn't sustainable because I was like getting carpal tunnel. And then I started typing it and like that kind of helped, but like, it wasn't as efficient as what you're describing. So I don't know. I mean, if you're out there and you're just like transcribing stuff and you just don't have time or something is, isn't working, try what Elijah's doing. Just literally just look at your notes, but like very, very thoroughly. Yeah. My question, I guess, would be some of these slide decks have 200 slides. Oh, yeah. Um, How do you do that? How do you like actively read every slide for 200 slides times like five slide decks? Like, how do you have time for that? Man, I, I, I'm studying all day, all day. I am... Um... God, you should you should see the way I like. I wish I had like a camera pointed at me to look like to like see what I like because I'm well like when I'm studying. I think I'm like like this. I'm like super like dialed yeah, in, like engaged, like, like like almost like rocking back and forth like a like a crack addict. <laughs> but like because <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm getting so antsy. I'm just like oh god, like I've been focusing like so hard for like yeah. six hours, and I'm just like I'm so tired, but I gotta keep going. Yeah, four hundred. You're right. I think some of my like like some lectures are like a hundred slides each, and it, it's really impossible to learn all of it. So the best I could do is at least get through the material, so then I see it once. Sometimes I don't have my time to do my second go around, right? To reinforce that photo memory. So my first time around, I'll I'll just do my best to at least see everything once. If I can see everything once, then when I take the test. I can eliminate enough to where I know that's not a, the answer. Like, oh, that's not even part of that slide. Like, I can immediately eliminate that. So I think it was a lot of studying and just 
realizing what's relevant and what isn't relevant because I feel like that's what helped me eliminate during the test. Mm hmm. Hmm. That is so the opposite of my advice. So I know we're all different. <laughs> We, it works. There's many ways to skin a cat. And Elijah, you know, killed it this semester, got a great GPA. I feel like you just saw my transcript. I think I wouldn't say I killed it, but I did quite well. Um, and certainly learned enough to practice. And, you know, I'm practicing quite happily now for two years. Uh, so, like, there's a lot of ways to go about it, whatever works for you. But Elijah said he wants to see everything once, get a little bit of everything, and then he can eliminate what's not necessary. I say focus on the big topics and know them very, very, very well. Yep. And don't worry about the little ones until you've really gotten the big ones because that's most of what you're going to get tested on. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, man. P pick what works for you. Try it for one or two exams Elijah's way. If it's if it's working for you, just don't do anything else. I think no. I think what you said is completely right too. The the big the big concepts. I I. So what you want to do when you go to class is focus on what the lecturer, what your professor is actually saying, because those are technically the big topics that Boris is talking about. Because they're gonna want to, they're gonna focus on specifically those things. Like, I remember uh, one of my 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 anatomy professor would focus so much on one thing, and I'm just like, okay, there's gotta be a reason she's doing this. So when I go home, I definitely spend more time on those slides that she took more time in during class because those are the more important topics that I'm pretty sure she'll pull questions from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what board of course, what you said is exactly. Like, it, it, it's true too. Like that, I did focus on big concepts as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the age old question is what's going to be on the exam? Exactly. Mm -hmm. What's going to be on the exam? And the professor is going to be like, it's all important. Yeah, <laughs> everything. No, everything. <laughs> I, I hate that. And I, I love that because I saw you posted something on Instagram where you're like, when, when it's all important or whatever. <laughs> uh, and you're like, I'm going to buy your book. I saw it's that. Like, that's some true. It's because Patrick. Patrick sent that meme to me because he doesn't highlight anything, but I he's seen my slides. I'm uh, notorious yeah. for not only highlighting everything, but like making a bunch of marks. So the way yeah. I personally feel like I read something is I'm highlighting it as I'm reading it, which mm -hmm. sounds neurotic as hell. I understand that, but um, it, it helps me reinforce that. I'm not just like mindlessly reading. I'm actually reading each word for what it means. Mm -hmm. And then... I'll also have like a blue line underneath that highlighted word. That means I've gone over it a second time. <laughs> like every single thing you read or just what you think is important? Yeah, like like important like buzzwords, basically. Yeah, buzzwords. yeah, no, I did the same thing you did. Literally mm -hmm. the same thing. And like sometimes when it's like a very dense slide, you find yourself highlighting like 90% of it. And you're like, well, what? Did I, I didn't even do anything. But I just like highlighted the whole thing. Um, but you did because yeah. that's one repetition. You read it thoroughly and now you know this much is important. So that's one repetition. Mm -hmm. So add another repetition and maybe condense it further. Maybe don't, but just another repetition is reading it again. Exactly. And like, yeah. however many repetitions you need, it's probably less than you think. And then you got it. Here, I'll actually pull up a slide right now. Let's That's see. It's going to be all yellow. How do I share screen? Just click oh, share, on share content. Oh, only the host can share. <laughs> um, I, make you a host? I could probably make you a host. Okay. Uh, give me two seconds. This is like bringing back PTSD from PA school because they're like, oh, I can make you a host so you can look. God damn it. I don't know. I just remember them saying that all the time. <laughs> so there we go. Yeah, I'm making you a host. Okay, you're a host. Do you remember that? Like how certain students or like a, a TA or something would try to share something and the professor is like, oh, I need to make you a host. Ha ha. Uh -huh. While you're sitting there <laughs> just like, like okay, I don't, okay. Okay, I, I don't want to be here. Uh, All right. Let's see. Brought back that moment. Just let me know if you can see my screen, Boris. I can see your screen, which means everybody can see your screen. Okay. So here's one of my slides for histology. <laughs> it's all yellow. So, so <laughs> it's all yellow. All here. Can you see my my cursor? Yeah. Yeah. All yellow. Um, <laughs> the blue line means that I went over it twice. <laughs> <laughs> I like write things down here. Like okay. That's uh, heat. That's um, what's this? Uh, swelling. No, that's swelling. That's pain. Or is redness? Redness. Yeah. See, like I'll do that for like a check mark is like okay. Yeah, I read that. I read that. Read that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. well, you have that uh, that iPad thing where you can do it with the pencil too. Yeah. Yeah. Here, I, I'll I'll do it right now. Oh, I like that. 
Sorry, super ugly handwriting, but yes. <laughs> That's cool. I kind of wish I did that because I just had like an old cheap laptop and I, I couldn't do any of this. Um, let's see. That's really helpful. I, I feel like seeing that, I, I do have to recommend people use like a big iPad, like an iPad Pro where it's big enough to where you can see it. Um, mm. Like an Apple Pencil, because that would have been so helpful to be able to do. You know? It's, I, I love it. I, um, I was considering getting the laptop combo with the iPad, but honestly, this, this worked perfectly for me. Uh, I didn't need anything more than this. Yeah. So I, I see that a lot in like the pre-PA groups. It's like, what supplies should I get? Should I get a Windows? Should I get a MacBook? Should I get a whatever? And Elijah just showed how convenient it is studying using a Apple iPad, the Apple Pencil, and what's that program? Pencil Notability. Pencil. What is it? Notarly? Uh, notability. Notability, where mm -hmm. you can like import your PowerPoint slides and you can mark them up and highlight them with the pencil like all by hand. Mm -hmm. You can do cool little tricks with your Apple Pencil like Elijah's <laughs> doing. I even have like my name ingrained in it or engraved on it. I don't know if you can oh, see that. Oh, that's so official. <laughs> it's kind of blurry, but yeah. <laughs> but then it also, it's like a, a fidget spinner too, so that's pretty convenient. I, I would mess with it so much. I feel bad for the people sitting behind me because I'm just like doing that thing all day. <laughs> no, they're all doing it too. <laughs> Probably. Probably like tapping their foot. Oh man, I'm so notorious for not being able to sit still during lecture. It's horrible. <laughs> Literally, it's it's so funny how everyone has the same personality who gets into medicine. Mm -hmm. Like we, everyone who makes it anyway has like the same personality. Or some people like bury their personality and then they go into like weird niche like fields of medicine where like normal mm. people can be or like certain people can be but like everyone who like does well in school and ends up in like a normal medicine field has the same personality we're like super high strong very add hands yep. it <laughs> and when we have to we like rebel by like spinning a pencil or tapping our foot or something mm. and then like we switch gears so easily people get pissed off and can't keep up with us it's like it's the same personality we um me me and uh, the two other guys in my row we sit next to each other and we have this weird like tick like during exams when we're really like focusing hard we like shake our legs i don't know if you've seen people do that like they kind of like um i don't want to show my leg because i'm wearing shorts but it's like a weird like tapping thing that you do with your leg <laughs> it's super weird like is it going like, sideways no like like up and down like yeah, you're like tapping your foot. You're like shaking your leg. Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah we all do that shit. I'm doing it right now. Like, I like have it. <laughs> if I wouldn't shake my laptop and the camera would get all wonky like this, I I'd probably be doing it too. <laughs> but anyway, okay, back on topic. So anyway, so Elijah's study method, first off supplies was Apple iPad, Apple Pencil, Notability, import the PowerPoint slides, and then, you know, highlight them with the pencil and then mark things up just draw things. And I'm pretty jealous of that. It, it sounds like it was really a good setup for you. Yeah. Oh, you didn't have anything like that or? I, I didn't want to spend that much money on Apple devices. So I had like an old cheap Lenovo that kept freezing and I would just like type my notes. Um, but I feel like it would have been way more efficient to do what you're doing. Yeah. If I got into school a lot sooner after my undergrad, I would have used my older gaming laptop, but it was, it was already so out of date. I needed something like newer. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think we're going to clip that out of the video on its own because people are always asking what supplies should I have? Yeah. And it sounds like that combo is very, very helpful. And most of my class, easily like 70% of my class use the same combo. Oh, yeah. I think everyone in my class had it. But I also think it's because our program requires it. <laughs> it requires it because people have found so much success with it. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, the uh, iPad with Notability just sounds like the way to go for uh, for learning vast amounts of material quickly. I guess I did do something similar in undergrad where I used to print out all the slides because we didn't have all this like iPad stuff yet. So I would print it out and I would write on the slides, but, but I would just like, it, it sucks going through pieces of paper. Like having it all on the iPad is, is beautiful. Yeah, that's, yeah, that, that sounds like the best setup. In fact, it's such a good setup that like Rutgers PA program officially requires it. Mm -hmm. Officially requires you to have an iPad and an Apple Pencil and Notability. That's like the winning combination. I, I love it. I mean, I, I can see why. I can see why they do it. Man, 
I mean, because like you see that on the pre-PA groups, right? Everybody's asking what, you know, what supplies should I get? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't get a more distinct answer than a very prestigious PA program literally requiring this setup. I'm going to say it for a ninth time. iPad, Apple <laughs> Pencil, Notability. Go get a straight A's just like Elijah. <laughs> hey. Uh, a minuses, a couple A minuses. <laughs> uh, okay, I know. Yeah, uh, what do they call that when like uh, a YouTube video doesn't have what's promised? Clickbait, clickbait. He didn't Click get straight. Bait. He got an A minus. Clickbait. <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> wouldn't you, Mister Complainer, like like to also get almost straight A's and A minuses in PA program? Oh, man. I I do better. Go do better, and then you can yell at us. Yes. <laughs> you know, I, I think anybody would be extremely jealous of the position Elijah's in right now. You know, I, you know what, it was a lot of, uh, the semester was a lot of, um, I think self proving to myself. I feel like I somewhat proved it to myself, uh, before PA school. Cause I did a lot. I was working full time, doing my master's full time, mm -hmm. retaking prereqs along with those masters, like on the side, uh, I was getting married that year. I was applying to PA school and I was still getting shut out. That's like a lot of stuff. Right. But yep. I got, I did really well in my master's, but I feel like I didn't really prove myself until mm -hmm. PA school started. Because on top of everything I've ever done in my life, I'd say this is the hardest thing I've ever done. Mm -hmm. um, and for me to get even an A minus, even though that's not the grade I wanted, uh, yeah. I felt like good. I proved a lot to it's myself. Very good. <laughs> I, okay, just for reference, Boris, uh, Boris has been telling me it's good. He's been texting me like, it's fine, it's fine. But I was like... Good. It's really it, it good. is. It is. But the just knowing how close I was, I was less yeah. than a percent away on literally all of those classes, mm -hmm. and I absolutely killed those finals. And I think I was only like on each and every single final, I was probably like two or three questions from in flat A in all of those classes. So You're yes, I'm happy. A. Huh? You're like a high A minus. You're not like a. 89.9 or a 90.1 you're like a 92.9 like almost oh, yeah. that free oh yeah like one two three questions away one extra quiz question i could have gotten right Perfect. one extra question i didn't uh could have gotten right on our lab practicals like things like that and it's just it's hard to not go back in the semester and be like oh man like i, I could have like gotten these points but at the same time i knew every single day i was giving it 100 percent. so if this is what you know what came to be then who am I to complain? Cause you know, it's hard. It's tough. It's, it's the toughest thing. I mean, it, it is frustrating. We're like one little tiny extra bit could have gotten you, you know, a different letter grade, uh, which is very annoying. I, I had one of those situations, actually mm -hmm. this particular one, I wait, host disabled screen. Oh, you're the host now. So I can't share my screen. <laughs> Fine. It, it's whatever. It's, we only have two minutes left in the recording anyway. Um, so don't worry about it. But yeah, I had, <clears throat> so we didn't have minuses and pluses. We were either B or an A. So mm -hmm. if you're like 0.1% away, you're not like between a B plus and a B minus and a A minus or a B or whatever. You're an A or a B, the end. Wow. So that B that you saw in physical diagnosis my first semester, I think that was some BS, I remember, because I remember being very mad about it because I think they graded something on a curve or whatever. And like uh -huh. they made some mistakes, so a bunch of people got screwed. And I remember being like really pissed. Like I could have had straight A's here, and now I have this glaring B, which is upsetting. And it was like an eighty nine point nine percent. It was like, oh my god! I was so like... pissed. And it was some <laughs> bullshit too. It wasn't even like even something I missed. It was like on, graded on a curve. I don't remember. Like I could have done better. Obviously, I, you know, could have got the A in some other way. But I just remember being really pissed really really mad because whatever but either way like it doesn't really matter but i had this conversation with a professor about like how mad i was and how like this is going to screw up my gpa and what if i want to do a fellowship and she's like bro it does not matter i promise <laughs> it doesn't matter you know you're gonna get if you want a fellowship go you're gonna be able to get into a fellowship if you want a job they're not gonna ask you what your gpa is even though it is on my resume because it was good it's like no one cares it's not undergrad you're already in it, it, it just doesn't matter anymore is that true that they, they even for jobs, they, they, they don't ask it at all? No, no one cares. I put it on there just because it's good, and you're going to put it on there because it's good, but no one cares. Are you licensed? Do we like you? The end. No one cares what GPA you got. 
in PA school. Medical school is different, I think, because you have to like rank in your class. Yeah. You know, that's, <laughs> yeah, medical school is just nonstop stress about everything. PA school, if you're in, you pass, you're basically good. You know, fellowship, it might matter a little bit, but I don't know. I'm in a fellowship right now. I'm finishing it up. No one cared. Oh, wow. Yeah. Did we okay. want to move on to the next uh, Zoom call? That was like perfect timing. <laughs> yeah, you want to move on to the next Zoom call, actually. <laughs> um, but no, that actually, that does bring up a good topic. Fellowships after PA school. Right? I don't know if it's something you're considering. 